Hello! In this video, I want to talk about Jordan Belford, the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, his story, but uh, I mostly want to talk about something that a lot of people don't, and that is how he bounced back, how he turned he turned his life around. Uh, before I begin, down below in the description is a link, and if you click on it, um, there's some training on how someone like yourself can uh, really make some good amount of money uh, using social media. All right, well, in the movie, Basically, a lot of the stuff was true. There's a couple of details, like the car scene. It was Mercedes, not Lamborghini. But a lot of the stuff in the movie actually happened in real life. That was pretty amazing. Um, even his plane getting shot, destroyed, like right after his, his boat, his yacht sunk. <laughs> um, but the most fascinating part about it to me was how he bounced, bounced back, uh, which is easy. I mean, it's hard enough acquiring a lot of success, money wealth and you could debate on you know why he went to jail and all that sort of stuff but that's one part right the second part is after you lose it all how do you come back i mean it's not easy it's hard to lose it and come back um and in the movie he had about he built a company right which he did um it was worth 200 well, the company was worth four hundred million. He owned half of it, so he was worth two hundred million dollars. And according to him, the hardest part at night was when he was in his jail cell, just sitting there. And according to him, he thought about his kids. And sure, there was fear in him, but you know, more moving past your fear, that's what courage is all about. You know, um, his one of his fears was he wasn't gonna be able to make any money. He wasn't going to support his family. There's a lot of fears going on. And, um, you know, I know from experience myself, too, actually, I ended up in a Cambodian jail cell. And that was an interesting story about how I got into that. I got in a fight. And I guess when you're in a foreign country like Cambodia, no matter what happens, you're the foreigner, you lose. Um, and uh, I was just sitting there all crammed in some tiny little jail cell. And all kinds of weird stuff was going on in me. I saw somebody actually die, like, right in front of me in the jail cell. He had a health problem. He just died right there. He couldn't even get really help from the, you know, the guards or whatever. It's pretty sad, really. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Have you, ever, have you ever seen someone die, like, right in front of you? No. Well, maybe. But anyways, um, another thing that Jordan Belford uh, said that was very interesting uh, was that, sure, there's some luck to success. There, there is luck. We got to say that, right? But it does come down to special skills. And people have these extraordinary skills and they take action, makes them successful. It's not always luck. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think if you learn the right skills and you actually just apply them, you will be successful. And that's what he's all about. Uh, so he's a big, big, big believer in learning skills. I, I agree with that. Now, persuasion is a powerful skill. Yeah, it is. Whether you like to admit it or not, it is. Once you learn the right ones, and you can learn all, all skills are learnable. I believe that. You could move mountains. You could do almost anything. Uh, do you think that's true? Do you believe that? I do. I think if you learn the right skills, you could do a lot of some cool, cool stuff. Um, now, The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, when he wrote his first book, uh, he was a horrible writer. You know, he is a right. He just he's like the sales guy right on the phone and teaching sales to his people. So he's not a writer. So how do you teach himself how to write? That's a good question. Well, he first got a book called The Bonfire of the Vanities by Tom Wolf. Uh, and he thought he that guy was like a great, great writer. He's like, I want to be like him. So what he did was he actually reverse engineered it and he used that novel. Uh, I believe it was like a fantasy novel or something. But he used it like a textbook, like a mentor. Got his little highlighter out, highlighting a lot of stuff. And just basically copied them in a lot of ways. Um, and he said that for six or seven months, for like 18 hours a day, he just studied how to write from that book. Now he, yeah, 18 hours a day, probably over-exaggerated just a little bit, you know. Kind of like uh, money. When people ask how much money they make, they usually over-exaggerate and stuff. Um, one point I, I want to touch base on, actually a couple points on this, is I have a marketer that I'm, uh, I am learn from. And he's, he, he does exact numbers or odds. Just so people know 
be, <laughs> you have to show proof too, but be, people are people think you're bullshitting them, right? If you don't do that. That's what he says. Um, one more point here that I thought was very interesting. I read a book in there a while back ago about never splitting a difference with Chris Voss. He was like this head hostage negotiator for the FBI. He talks about when it comes to numbers and the price, how you negotiate that, is you have to kind of start high, so you have to drop it down two times so people feel like they're getting a great deal. Um, and then the third time, you use an exact number, which is odd. Like you really calculate in your head. And then if they still press you for like a discount or something, uh, then you basically, you have to offer them like a free toaster, a free back massage, something that has no monetary value. Just so they psychologically know that they got all they can from you and it's done. I thought that was pretty interesting. They use the exact numbers on certain things. But anyways, get off topic completely here about that. That was pretty fun. Um, so he steps out of jail. Jordan Belfer, I, I think he served two years, but he was sentenced four years, well, almost two years. Um, and everyone told him he'd be back quickly. He said, yeah, it's true, but you know, it may take some time. Not going to happen overnight. Uh, and before the book was even released, he had a movie deal. And the star was going to play him was either going to be Brad Pitt or Leo DiCaprio. And Leo won. And at that time, right before the movie was going to get started and all this other stuff, they had this whole writer's strike, the writers. Um, so, dang, that kind of su sucks, right? So Leo went on to do Shutter Island, which is another book uh, that turned into a movie. And I read that book a long time ago, and I thought it was a good book. The movie, not so good. Sometimes the books are better than movies. But it took seven years for The Wolf of Wall Street to come back around. And before the movie made him rich, and the book, you know, the book being for sales, but the movie would have helped. <laughs> yeah, a lot of tension and eyeballs on him. Um, him and his wife actually came to an agreement to start a consulting business, uh, mentoring and coaching, using his whole straight line system for closing sales. And today, uh, after all the time, the movie, the consulting business, which pays him a lot of money um, and all that stuff, it's estimated that his net worth is around $100 million. I mean, that's darn good, all right? Now, he came back to the money that he lost almost. I think it was worth like $200 million at his height. Um, of course, it's debatable because who knows? He could have just hit some of that money in offshore accounts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, the important thing is he did kind of somewhat come back. And, uh, you know, they all just butt sore and depressed and want to go shoot himself or something. Um, and plus, he made it in a way that was, uh, you know, with the business consulting, the, the, the books, the movies. It was somewhat more, you know. Or legal or whatever. I don't know exactly how he went to jail, but, you know, I mean, he said he was wrong and he, he was sentenced and all sort of stuff. And I think it was like, uh, some of those tax evasion, I think it was, like not paying your taxes. And I think the second one was like some maybe uh, securities fraud or something like that. Anyways, I don't know the details. Um, one last point, which I do want to talk about is uh, Jordan said that we will do more for someone uh, that we love, you know, unconditionally, than we will do for ourselves. We can only do so much for ourselves, you know. And uh, you draw your power from um, from other people, doing things for them and who you love. You think that's true? I do. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Um, most powerful force is unconditional love. I think it's true. So if you like this video, uh, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, if you're interested in making some money um, online, um, which... You know, I always thought it was a good idea because, honestly, I've been fired from some jobs. I've had some bosses that are, that are just shitty. Um, and, you know, it's nice to just, you know, make some money on the side. Because it, when the winds shift, who knows what can happen at your job. You can be like, hey, you got to go, yo. And it's just sucky feeling, man. So you don't want to be too dependent on your boss. It's just it's not really a good thing. It makes you kind of weak. It does. Uh, no matter what you do. Um, so if you want to make some money online, the most important thing is you don't want to be one of these guys who are stubborn, goes out there and tries to do it all himself and spends a bunch of time and energy and not getting results. Okay, um, It happens. That was one of my biggest fears. So the best way to do that is to learn the shortcuts uh, because you can take the long way or you can take the short way. And you take the short way 
I learn from other people's fuck ups. And you get like a mentor, somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing, and then you just, you know, you basically kind of copy their system. Just to, to take a brain surgeon, and then you learn what they do, and you pick up the skill set, the skill. So that is about skills. Um, and the guy that I'm involved with is really, really good. He's been doing it for a super, super long time. So I feel very comfortable recommending him to you and talking about him, okay? So if you want to check it out, you can want to make some money online. I highly encourage you to click that link below. Check it out, okay? Um, and bye for now.